Oh, poor CNN. You know, they tried. They tried. <laughs> and, they, and they clearly failed. And I don't blame the whole thing on poor Chris Licht. He was the, the guy who was sort of, you know, handed on a silver platter there to the people that had no interest in him being there. I don't entirely blame him, although I blame him a little bit. I mean, there were things that he could have done, should have done perhaps a little bit better. Uh, I, I've met him before. He is not Jeff Zucker. And I say this as somebody who's just, you know, trying to look at this as objectively as possible. I used to work for Jeff Zucker because he was at NBC when I was at CNBC and I reported on the Today Show and NBC News. And Jeff had a way with people that made people feel valued. It's, it's something that you're going to see in any good leader. Any good leader has this quality. Whether or not you agree with his politics, and obviously I don't, I, I'm just trying to look at it objectively here. Like, how did he manage to do okay and have sort of the faith and this uh, tremendous morale among employees? Well, by the way, like, his ratings weren't that great either. It's because somehow he convinced them all they were on a mission. A mission to get Trump. I mean, it's part of the problem. Right, but he he brought them all in. He was very very chummy with talent. He meaning that Chris Cuomo was his buddy and all the other talent there. He and I remember this. He'd like send you an email on your birthday, happy birthday. He was always very good about that. He liked talent. I, I actually think he genuinely liked talent. And listen, we're kind of a, a special little breed that maybe not all managers or producers necessarily like, only because you know it can be a lot to deal with them. But if you like talent and you appreciate talent and you understand talent then you're going to get more out of them. And, and this is just true in, in any management environment. It's the problem that Fox has, frankly. I mean, they don't have management in place that understands, likes, and gets talent, right? Because it is, as I, it's, it's a high-pressure, high-stakes kind of job, and everything's sort of riding on you when you're out there, even though you got a team of producers behind the scenes and they're doing some research for it. I mean, I don't have that here. It's kind of just you and me, and I have a little bit of help. But I don't have what I had at a network where you you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen, and you got the bells and whistles, and you got all the graphics and this, that, and the other. Um, the, the pressure, for example, on that one person is, is pretty unique, and it takes a very kind of unique person to be willing to get up there and do that every night. And if you don't have producers behind the scenes and managers behind the scenes and chief executives behind the scenes that kind of understand and appreciate that, then I think you can get off and into a bad path. I'm not saying that Chris Lick didn't. I just think he was probably, having met him a few times, a shyer personality who didn't really want to warm up to people or cozy up to people. And then you had that big Atlantic article, which suggested, of course, exactly that. And it seemed as though he was more interested in maybe pleasing his bosses than in leading an organization. And so therein lies the challenge. And that is a tough organization to lead. What I would say is any organization, right? When you step in, it can be really difficult. And if you're coming in and you're like, okay, now I need to change it all, well, of course, you're going to see resistance. So it comes down to how good you are as a manager and as a, a person, right? You're going to be kind of a people's person. It, it, you've got to be able to kind of correct course and steer the ship and have everybody on board. And by the way, if they're not on board, you know, you, you got to figure that one out. But he didn't get everyone on board. He didn't have a big, warm personality. And, you know, on top of it, he made bad choices on the talent front. And it's amazing to me how often that, that happens. Um, putting Don Lemon in the morning? I mean, I said when I, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Don Lemon in the morning. Like, nobody wants to wake up to Don Lemon in the morning. And now you're going to put him with two women. Well, he's not going to like that. Again, knowing talent, if you knew talent, you should understand. You should be able to get in the head of Don Lemon and say, you know what? Don is not going to want to have to sit next to two women and chit-chat about morning stories. He's just not going to do it. He's not going to be good at it. It's not going to be believable, whatever. And you put these other two women in a very, very bad spot. On top of that, one of the women... Somehow he thought was the, the greatest thing since sliced bread. And you like put her in at, at 8 p.m. I believe she's still there. This would be Caitlin Collins. And I think she's a very, very good reporter. But, you know, there's a difference between being a good reporter, which, by the way, we need more of. Do not underestimate that. We, there's a difference between being a good reporter and being a show host. 
There just is in terms of your energy, in terms of your intellect, in terms of your versatility and ability to kind of roll with things. And she didn't quite have that. So it was just mistake after mistake after mistake. And yes, he got rid of, uh, I, I, we used to call him the little Jeff sucker. The, you know, what's it, I, I think Hannity had a different name for him. Um, I don't want to be cruel. <laughs> But uh, Brian, I can't I can't remember his last name, but you know, I mean, the, the media critic guy. And he's, um, you know, he, he tried very hard. He also was not somebody who was necessarily what you would call TV friendly or personality friendly or engaging on television in any way. He was probably a good reporter for that kind of thing, in trafficking and gossip and that sort of stuff. And so I think that Brian left, and then all of a sudden, and, and I think Dylan Byers was another media reporter. So you had these media reporters that were sort of scattered and they were leaking and they were like conspiring, right? With the former boss. It's like Bob Iger all over again at Disney. And they're conspiring to sort of take Chris Lick down. So he's in this no-win situation. He doesn't have the support of the talent. He doesn't have the support of the rank and file. He's not really chummy-chummy or warm or outgoing. And he's scared to death because David Zaslav, who's a smart guy, and, and Malone, by the way, who also, you know, two really smart guys, and Malone is... is certainly more conservative than he is liberal, they want to change the place. But do you have the right person there to do it? I, I guess in retrospect, everybody would agree, no. I don't disagree with anything that Chris was trying to do. I think that that organization was at its best when it really could be a straight news organization.